Welcome everyone to Iroquois Park and the Jack O' Lantern Spectacular. And uh, as the song says, yes, it has been a long and winding road to get where we are today. Sort of like the trail that we're standing on. It has ups, it has downs, curves, but overall it's pretty smooth. Paul, Travis, Mayor, just think how far we've come in five years. You know, this really started a short five years ago. And even our Jack O' Lantern Spectacular event has more than doubled since our first year from, from 40,000 to over 85,000 paid last year. You know, because of great events that happen, we have completed two all-inclusive playgrounds and another one is on the way. With a little help from MSD, we're also, and the foundation, a spray ground is soon to follow at Lannan Park. So that's uh, pretty good stuff right there. You know, those are just really the big ticket items that the uh, Metro Parks Foundation has funded. And Brooke will talk a little bit later about some of the other private-public partnerships the foundation is, is uh, taking on. So if you kind of add what uh, is, is anticipated this year with attendance, and you couple that with Bourbon and Beyond and Louder Than Life, we're going to have close to 200,000 visitors and guests. That's, uh, that's pretty big. And when you think about it, it's about... 40 to 50 million dollars of economic impact to our community so uh, that, that is nice uh, you know they say it takes a team or a village to raise an idiot uh, that's David Faraday's book just so you all know and there's no difference with big events so I'd like to give a quick shout out and thank you to our operations team that are here in the back Kurt Steve both the Jasons David Art Tim Erica director uh, Ghost, uh, uh, Assistant Director Ben Johnson, and uh, Mike Hallett is here also. Where's Mike? Big round of applause for Mike Hallett and his Iroquois Amphitheater staff for what they've done. Robert, a little, mu a little music. <laughs> yes, they did, okay? Yes, they do rock, and just look at the path that we are standing on today. Then we have to thank Karen Williams and the CVB team. Without them, this event could never have landed, let alone remain in our community. No, no. I'll do it. Well, come on, Robert. <laughs> you know, not only has the CVB been very generous with this, but they are what make this community what it is. And a big round of applause to the CVB. So now that I've shanked a couple introductions, I might as well uh, uh, get off of those and uh, start talking about uh, some, the person I'm going to introduce next. You know, the man who brought us entrep entrepreneurial government and taught us all to get out of our comfort zones and be part of a bigger community not just our own little area, a friend to Metro Parks, Iroquois Amphitheater, and Southwest Jefferson County, I give you Mayor Greg Fisher. Thank you, Marty. Never a dull moment when he's the MC in here. That, good job. Well, boy, a lot to be said here today, but yeah, it is amazing. This is year five, and we started with uh, a big dream with our guys from uh, Providence. Why aren't you all up here? Paul is, is part, okay. Well, come on up here, Paul. If you want to come up here too, man. The big team here. These guys moved to town on kind of a dream and a prayer and, and hope, and man, it's wonderful to see. And I think, you know, both have significant others. We, we, populated the city as well uh, you know so they're all in so I want to say thanks to these guys I also want to thank our whole Metro Parks and Recreation team uh, so much of this is just takes big teamwork to get something like this done it's easy to have a big idea it's harder to make it happen so uh, Marty you and your team doing this Sevi, your steady leadership the whole team pulling together I just want to say thanks to everybody before we get started here when you think about all the exciting stuff happening in Councilwoman Marianne Butler's district here at Iroquois Amphitheater. It's an amazing thing. 
You look amazing here today. I mean, did she dress for this event here? Or, well, let's give her a round of applause for her dress code here today. Strong play. Vicki Welch, Councilwoman, thank you so much for being here. She's retiring at the end of this year. She's been one of the great public servants in the history of merged government. 2018. We still got another year, but thank you so much for everything that you're doing as well. Let's hear it for Councilwoman Welch. The Iroquois Amphitheater, one of our goals was to make that uh, a mecca for regional entertainment. And it has really turned into that. And as the bands come through here, they will say this is one of the best spots that they've played. And people from throughout this whole part of the country have enjoyed our season. Everybody from the Old Crow Medicine Show to Government Mule, Garrison Keeler, and some great local acts that were a part of our first ever Burnt Knob Music Festival as well. We also wrapped up our 10th season of free movie nights at the amphitheater, thanks to Councilwoman Butler and the rest of the Metro Council members who continue to fund these events and are great supporters of the amphitheater. You know, we're all about bringing people together, and the amphitheater is an awfully big part of it. And this is a big part of it. So we're at year five. We've seen tremendous growth in this festival since the passion for pumpkins first came to us, and they thought that Iroquois Park would make a great setting for this show. And boy, were they right. 30,000 people the first year, 90,000 people last year, and I'm sure we'll break that goal this year. It's a quarter mile trail through Iroquois Park, and it's just a delightful thing. You know, people sometimes look at you and say, okay, you want me to go look at pumpkins? And uh, what I say is, I will guarantee your money back if you don't think this is a good thing. Okay, and people are like, they blew them away. So it says, spectacular event and there's a lot of passion behind the team here also want to emphasize it's it's safe the trail is well lit it's fully staffed it's accommodating for kids and grown-ups and it's very very cool there are going to be more than 5,000 jack-o'-lanterns and 100 intricately designed pumpkins you can see your favorite actor actress singer villain hero who knows who you're going to run into on this trail it's very sitting, uh, fitting because this year the theme is the alphabet from A to Z because really it is all here and you're going to see it here on this trail. And I think there's no place more appropriate to host it than in one of our beautiful Olmstead parks, beautiful Iroquois Park, which is part of our South Point scenic area, which is growing in visitors and tourists. So when you think about Churchill Downs, Riverside, the Farnsley Mormon Landing, Jefferson Memorial uh, Forest, and all the growth that's going out here and soon to be Colonial Gardens. Uh, as well. There's a lot of reasons to come out here to check out what's going on in South Points. So I want to thank our sponsors for making this authentic little event possible as well. The Jack O'Lantern Spectacular is produced by Passion for Pumpkins, which has been in business for more than 25 years, led by Travis Reckner and Paul Cadu. This group features a slew of local artists creating affordable, top-notch family enterta entertainment. Let's hear it for Travis and Paul. Right here. And if you haven't been, you need to come. And if you've been before, you know you need to come back because every show is different, so be sure to tell your friends about it. And tickets are affordable, ranging from $9 for kids, $10 to $13 for seniors, and $12 to $16 for adults. You can buy your tickets online at jackolanternlouisville.com. Now, in addition to the Passion for Pumpkins crew, let's thank the Louisville Parks Foundation and Brooke Pardue who has just been named its new CEO. Let's hear it for Brooke. <laughs> Brooke will be up in a moment to talk about how the Jack O'Lantern Spectacular benefits the foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that does outstanding work to raise money to support our parks. I'd also like to give a, a special thanks to someone that we've already heard from today, Marty Storch. Marty is retiring from parks at the end of this month and that is a very big loss for the community. I cannot overstate how much work Marty has done for Metro Parks and Recreation in the city of Louisville as a whole. And I expect we'll be seeing Marty back in some type of capacity. He loves our city too much. He's got too much energy. He's too connected into too many different things. But he is retiring from city government. Marty has been instrumental in programming here at the amphitheater and has been a key figure behind the city's involvement and a lot, of, a lot of great things, such as the first tee of Louisville, which has introduced thousands of kids to the game of golf, and that's one of Marty's loves, golf. 
the cyclocross course at Ava Bandman Park and of course the world championship that we hosted there, one of the most thrilling they've ever had in their history. The Dirt Bowl at Shawnee Park, which is an indelible part of this city's rich history with the game of basketball. Marty is central to that whole history. And then various cities' events like Bourbon and Beyond, uh, Louder Than Life, Hike, Bike, Paddle, and Zumba, Tai Chi, and Yoga, <laughs> Paddle Ball, Pickle Ball, Clay Ball, whatever next idea he's going to come up with, we'll see it next year. He'll be the kind of guy that's still calling, giving us orders, even though he's retired. All right? So uh, really thinks about how we can leverage our city's assets to grow not just a healthier uh, city, but a more economically vibrant city as well. So we're going to miss uh, Marty's hard work, as well as his unusual sense of humor and playful nature. <laughs> so Marty, uh, we're going to celebrate you at your retirement party, but I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you've done. You are an all-star player. All right, Marty Storch, thank you. So right now, yeah, let's hear another round of applause for him. Yeah. I mean, Thank you, Marty. Okay, so right now let's hear from Travis Reckner from Passion for Pumpkins about this year's show and about how visitors will experience it. Travis? We got, oh. some, we got some more playing music. <laughs> Back to the stage, Marty Storch. I told you he was a smooth operator. I wasn't expecting those kind words, and I appreciate that. So uh, I, t I did tell the mayor when I was leaving that I've got some things that I have to complete. And that was uh, in the jack-o'-lantern, the cyclocross, and then we get into light up Louisville, and I said, and then I'll be done. So uh, let's talk about a couple other smooth operators. Uh, you know, the mayor talked about that, but there's not enough that can be said for the Passion for Pumpkins team. And so glad that you all believe in the mayor's mantra of continuous improvement. You know, Travis once proclaimed that we were going to deliver the biggest and baddest pumpkin show in the universe. Yeah, and I believe uh, these people are after the mayor's own heart because they are delivering. So thank you, Paul, Maddie, Bubba, and team. What happened to the What happened to the working man blues? Oh, as. The working man, man, we got to give a little love to the working man because Travis really couldn't do all this alone. Remember the takes a village comment, so uh, it really isn't, isn't as easy as ABC, but let's uh, give it a little intro music for Mr. Travis Reckner. Marty, thank you very much. We're going we're, we're gonna to miss you, buddy. Big time, big time. So, um, but here, yeah, here we are, year five. A lot of familiar faces. Um, you know, the the past year has been a really interesting, crazy one, out of the pumpkin field for the pumpkin family, and it just, you know, it changes your perspective, and it just makes you really grateful, and just the thanks to everybody. You know, I. I try to think of all of Marty's guys and Mike Hallett's guys and the mayor and city council and CBB, everybody just thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, just don't have enough words for it. So here we are, year five. Uh, we've taken you around the world. We've taken you through time. Uh, got a lot of journeys. Well, this one is going to be the alphabet. Um, you know, it's we, we got to keep it pretty simple for us. <laughs> so, uh, the alphabet, we try to uh, encompass everything from around the world, and uh, I think I think we've succeeded in doing this. So um, we're really looking forward to seeing everybody come through the trail, and uh, hoping that we blow everybody away. Uh, we feel good about it, but. Just want to thank everybody again. So, we look forward to this year and we hope you all enjoy it. So, thank you. You know, thank you, Travis, and uh, can't wait for tonight's opening. 
And uh, here's to beating last year's numbers, as the mayor so eloquently put it. So speaking of numbers, we are in District 15, which is Councilwoman Mary Ann Butler's, but we're also among some other significant council members in this area of town. Because they make a difference to the South End, they are called the Southwest Dream Team. Thank you all for being here. So representing her district, her park, and the entire Southwest Dream Team, Councilman Mary Ann Butler. Thank you, Marty. You're welcome. Appreciate that. And welcome to District 15. We're the most hospitable district. We uh, have things all spring with road race races, and then we got a little horse race in May, so we needed something in the fall. This works well. Uh, our residents are used to the traffic and they really enjoy it and we help everyone get out of here after it's over with. Uh, I just live on the other side of the park and even my neighborhood is full at this time. But I have to thank all of the council members, not just those of us that are around the park, but others throughout the community help give money to help this go off. And we also this year for the first time are doing coupons. There's still some coupons left for people. If they're interested, they have to live in Louisville Metro. 574-2854 is the number they need to call. But we're so thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to have the pumpkins back again for the fifth year. And um, we hope everyone comes out. We're going to try to keep the weather cool so the pumpkins last longer. And no rain in the evenings. So thank you. I heard that. That was a dream, OK? It's a good dream. You know. Uh, Councilwoman Butler and, and her family have been serving the South End for, for generations. And uh, just like the next speaker from another family who knows about service to their community from her father, E. Hampton Perry, uh, and who is the leader of the First Tee, who is also stepping down at the end of this year. So I don't know what's good. It must be in the water. Where's the water company? So um, Brooke, is her passion for parks is shown with her role with the Parks Foundation and making these playgrounds and spray grounds and other amenities possible through the uh, foundation. So I give you Brooke Pardue. There you go. I want you to know I've been freaking out for about 20 minutes about what song you were going to have on there for me. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Marty. Thank you, Mayor Fisher. Um, I'm so pleased to be here uh, again this year in my new role as president and CEO of the Louisville Parks Foundation. Um, you've heard all these folks talk about Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular and what a tremendous show it is, but I want to talk a little bit about the fact that all proceeds from this show do go to the Louisville Parks Foundation and are invested back in our community. Um, so every time you come to visit Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular, you're making another investment back in the Louisville community. With the proceeds from last year, we were able to put in uh, two inclusive playgrounds at Lannan Park in the Portland neighborhood and another one in Russell Lee Park in Park Duval. Uh, we were able to provide matching grants for the ECHO program, engaging children outdoors uh, with Jefferson Memorial Forest, and we sponsored scholarships for children to uh, attend summer camp at some of our community uh, centers. So these investments back in our community would not be possible without this show. So I just want to thank Travis and Paul again for everything that you do uh, to support our community. Uh, I also want to uh, make sure that we thank all of our sponsors once again this show wouldn't be possible and this investment in our community wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the tremendous support that we receive from our sponsors uh, louisville convention and visitors bureau we've we've given them a shout out but they need to get as many shout outs as possible uh, the louisville metro council this year um, provided great sponsorship dollars uh, papa john's yeah there we go uh, Papa John's, Delta Dental, WellCare, Republic Bank, LG&E, 
Fall City Beer, Kentucky Select Properties, the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, Kentucky Proud. And I realize we didn't mention that all of the pumpkins in this year's show all came from the state of Kentucky, um, which is amazing. Uh, waste Management, Girl Scouts of Kentuckiano, Metro Fence, Louisville Eye Center, Louisville Independent Business Association, Porta Clean and Juleps Catering have all given of uh, their time, their treasure, and their talent to pull off uh, this tremendous event. So thank you once again to our sponsors, and and everyone needs to make sure that they get out here. Thanks so much. You only have 24 days to do that, so make sure you come early and come often. That's like voting in Kentucky. And with that, I also just want to recognize Ellen Hessen, who uh, is the deputy mayor. She is the chief cook, bottle wash, chief of staff for the mayor. Okay. And I believe Mayor Fisher has a couple more words he'd like to share. All right, so we're transitioning just a little bit from our jack-o'-lantern spectacular to announce a, a, a key transition uh, in city government, and that is the uh, Yvette Gentry is uh, giving us a couple years of her time after she retired from Louisville Metro Police Department as our chief for community building, and she is transitioning to another phase of her life. I just want to thank her for just an incredible energy and insight that she's given uh, to our city in many ways over the past couple of decades, but most recently as our chief for community, community building and bringing an unparalleled passion for our kids, making sure that they can reach their, all their potential that they have. So, Yvette, I want to thank you for everything that you've done. You've been great. You will be great. She's going to continue to serve on the advisory board of the Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods. So while she kind of relaxes a little bit and enjoys uh, time not working so intently, she still is going to be putting her passions to work to help our kids. So I really appreciate that. Uh, that provides uh, an opportunity for us to uh, lift up an individual who has been doing really incredible work for the city coming with an unusual uh, background of combining a world-class business resume as a manager at General Electric. Then he became bivocational when he was working at GE and then also a ministering in the community at Elam Baptist Church. And then within in the past year and a half or so, we formalized our relationship with him. It had been one is working with our Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods to a very active minister in our community. Uh, currently, he runs the Interdenominational Ministerial Coalition. But about a year and a half ago, he joined city government uh, and working with our Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods. So now we have the opportunity to take advantage of his business experience, management experience, and his deep knowledge of our community and love for our community by elevating him to the position of chief for community building, and that's Vincent James. So, Vincent, we are so happy that you are joining us. Uh, he is really uniquely situated to take us to another level. That's what we try to do every time that we follow great leaders like Yvette and say, okay, now how can we make this work even more meaningful for everybody? Our, our goal, obviously, is to make sure that every person's human potential is flourishing in our city. That's how we define compassion. But then we've got to bring it to life. And the Chief for Community Building has really an unparalleled opportunity to do that. Parks Department reports into this chief, our Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods, our Public Health Department, our zoo. Let's see, am I missing anything else? And youth detention uh, as, as well. So you can have this whole system, if you will, about developing people and places in our community. And by having all that together, we can cross over with each other and make each department in our city stronger as a result of that. So it's just a great, great position and a great job with a great person that's taken that. So please welcome Vincent James. Thank you, Mayor Fisher, for your continued visionary leadership that has helped to drive our city to becoming a more compassionate city. And my hat is off, tipped off to Yvette Gentry, uh, the chief of community building. And I'm so thankful for her uh, vision to be able to see uh, talent within myself to bring me into city government and to be able to continue the partnership and working 
And I'm just so excited about this opportunity and privilege to be able to serve uh, our entire community in a unique and special way. Uh, I believe this is a, a divine moment for our community to be able to come together and work in a tremendous way together. It was uh, Dr. Benjamin Mays, the former president of Morehouse College, who once said that each man or woman is born for a specific and unique task. And if they don't accomplish that task, it will never be done. And I just believe that this is the opportunity and time for me to be able to share in this community, be able to do something very unique and something very special that we have an opportunity to build together. So I'm honored, I'm humbled at the same time, and I'm excited and on fire and ready to see change happen, building on the shoulders of giants who've come before me. Now I have an opportunity to continue that legacy and continue that work. And again, thank you, Mayor Fisher, for believing in me and seeing the work and seeing the opportunity to be able to go forward and thank the city of Louisville uh, for entrusting us to be able to carry out the vision and mission of the city of Louisville. Thank you very much. A little music, Robert. Since we're in my old Kentucky home.